life, and literature are interdependent. Literature represents life. And we learn to live life from literature. But sometimes, literature represents life so effectively that for a moment, our brain gets totally blank and all our senses get numbed. This kind of literary work has the potential to change our way of thinking. Today, I am going to talk about such a literary work which actually falls into the genre of poetry. And the name of that poem is Refugee Mother and Child by Chinua Achebe. This poem has the power to melt our hearts as it is based on reality. It depicts the pain and suffering of a mother in a refugee camp. To understand and study this poem, it is important to know the background of this poem. The Nigerian Civil War is one of the biggest tragedies in the world history. Nearly one million people died of starvation during this civil war. Many people lost their homes, property, and loved ones. And had to spend their lives in refugee camps during the civil war where there was no food, water, or sanitation. Achebe describes the suffering and pain of a mother in such a refugee camp. He says, No Madonna and child could touch the picture of a mother's tenderness for a son, she soon will have to forget. In this stanza, he compares the love and tenderness of refugee mother for her child to the love and tenderness painted in the painting of Mother Mary for her baby Jesus. Here, Madonna and child relates to the idea of Mother Mary and her child Jesus. And he further says that the refugee mother would have to forget her child soon. Forgetting a child is impossible for any mother. But this mother has to forget her child. And we do not know why. But eventually, at the end of the poem, we will know the reason. In the second stanza, he describes the atmosphere and the situation of the children in the refugee camp. The air was heavy with orders of diarrhea, of unwashed children, with washed out ribs, and dried up bottoms. Struggling, in labored steps behind blown empty bellies. He says, The atmosphere in the camp, was filthy. And was filled with odors of diarrhea of those children, who were dirty, malnourished with blown empty stomachs. And had no energy to even walk. This is quite unimaginable, for us, because we see children around us full of energy, and enthusiasm. But the situation of children, in that refugee camp, was very different. In the next stanza, he describes the mother. Most mothers there had long ceased to care, but not this one. She held a ghost smile between her teeth, and in her eyes the ghost of a mother's pride, as she combed the rust-colored hair left on his skull, and then singing in her eyes, began carefully to part it. Here, he says that other mothers, in the camp have no energy left to care for their children. But this mother is still taking care of her child. She has a ghost smile that is a ghost of a smile on her face, which means her smile is dead, but still she is trying to keep that smile on her face. She also has ghost of mother's pride in her eyes, which refers to the memories of her being a proud mother. She is parting the rust-colored hair of her child. Rust represents decay. Here we get the idea that the child is having a very ill health most probably because of the severe malnutrition. In the final stanza, we get answers to all our questions. In another life, this would have been a little daily act of no consequence before his breakfast and school, now she did it like putting flowers on a tiny grave. In a normal life, the act of combing hair of the child before his breakfast and school would have been an easy task for her. But the situation is different now, as she is combing his hair like putting flowers on a tiny grave. Which means, the child is actually dead. And in a way, by combing his hair, she is saying her last goodbye, to her child. Now remembering the death of the child, would have been too difficult for her. 
And that is the reason why, the poet says at the beginning that, the mother would have to forget her child. This kind of literary work, gets stuck in our minds. And paints an actual picture, of the scene in front of our eyes.